Next Chapter Podcasts presents the Play On podcast series, Pericles, Episode 1, Hell Can Dance to Such a Tune. For the best listening experience, be sure to use your headphones or earbuds. Now, let imagination have its way. To sing a song that old was sung, long dead, a poet, Gower is come. Reborn, I stand here as I stood by firesides in darkened woods, at harvests and when fasts were broken, both high and lowborn heard it spoken. Let echoes of the past remind your modern ears of simpler times. I'll tell of ancient rights and wrongs, of what we feared or praised in songs. If someone dead for centuries can tell a story that will please you listening on this living night, my candle's tale I set alight. What do you think is going on? Did you see this Antioch. And this, the king, Antiochus, and everything he sees, he rules, which fuels his pride. More. The wife he took, a royal bride now dead, left him his only heir, a girl so perilously fair, this father gave his lust-free reign and darkest incest spread her stain. A child seducer's soul is rotten, but when she is your own begotten, it sickens more. The mind must reel. But so he did, and came to feel the sin was nothing he should end. Instead, he plotted to defend his plunder when the suitors came to woo the beauty of such fame. To solve a riddle, they would vie. But if they failed, then they would die. <laughs> you see here, what becomes of men if fate pits them against Antiochus the Great. Pericles, Prince of Tyre, for the contest! <laughs> Young Prince of Tyre, I trust you understand the danger of the task you undertake. I do, Antiochus. I have no doubt. The rumor of her glory makes me bold. I'll risk my life for such a beauty's sake. Music! Bring in my daughter, clothed like a bride, worth the embrace even of Jove himself. Between her conception and her day of birth, nature and stars made sweet conspiracy to endow the maid with all their blessings. They nestled in her, waiting for the dawn she was born, then opened like a flower. See how she comes there, wreathed about with spring, haloed with her grace, virtues circling. All that humankind strives and hopes to be lives in that fair face, there for us to see. You gods that made me man and lit in me the longing to lick fruit of such a tree. I know that climbing high, I may just fall. But if you help me now, I'll risk it all. Prince Pericles. Who would be son to great Antiochus? <laughs> Before thee stands a garden hung with fruit, ripe for the picking. Oh, but if you touch... You wake the dragons who are sleeping there to slither and uncoil their snapping heads. These skulls belonged to princes like yourself, who once were famous and who dared to try. They heard the rumors, thought they had a chance. 
Now there are warnings that you should regard before you risk your life for such a gem. They hang as martyrs killed in Cupid's wars. You might just hear them if you listen hard. They say give up before you're just like them. Antiochus, I thank you. You have taught my frail mortality to know itself. And these poor relics also are my friends because they teach me to prepare my soul. I'll look to heaven and let this life go, wishing upon you peace as princes do, and give my body back unto the earth. But this, my flame of love, I give to you. Whatever is to come, if life or death, I'm ready for it now, Antiochus. If you won't take advice, the riddle waits, which, once you've seen it, you must then expound or join those dead before you and their fates. Of all who've tried, I wish you victory. Of all who've tried, might your reward be me. <laughs> Daughter! Now, like a knight I go to take the field and have no need of any other thought than courage and my faith in my own heart. But it is time, sir. Take up the riddle. A viper eats her mother's heart, and like her I feed at my start. For all male kind and kindred ties, I look no further than his eyes. As father, son, and husband, he has mother, wife, and child in me. All six are here, and yet just two. It's yours to say how this is true. The choice is clear to speak it out, or silent, die and leave the doubt. The poison of that threat is burning now. Oh, gods that stare with all the eyes of stars, how can you look down on such evil acts? If this is true, what keeps the heavens bright? Fair mask of beauty, I could love you still if I had never known what lay beneath. A violin like yours, if fingered right, would make a melody to please the gods. But on your ravaged strings the music sickens, and only hell can dance to such a tune. Prince Pericles, don't touch her or you're dead. For that's another law that binds your hand. And now the riddle needs to be explained, for if it goes unanswered, you must die. Great King, few love to hear the sins they do proclaim. If I should answer, you would take offense. If any man knew all that monarchs do, he would be wise to keep it to himself. Kings are Earth's gods. For good or ill, they rule. If Jove should sin, who dares to say God's wrong? To know is enough, why spread the dirt around? The ugly truth should die without a sound. Young Prince of Tyre, Though by the strictest letter of our law, because you haven't answered, you should die. I am inclined to mercy in your case and choose to wait with patience in the hope someone like you might see the light in time and so inherit kingdom and what's mine. Until you do, we'll entertain you here for 40 days and 40 long nights more. We swear to do our best to keep you near until you find the truth you're looking for. Our courtesy would seem to cover sin when everything that's said means something else. He speaks so smoothly, every word a lie. The only good here is what's for the eye. A serpent who's both father and a son, who's made his daughter monstrous with his clasping. Antioch, farewell. My life's at stake. One sin I know, another will provoke. Murders as close to lust as flame to smoke. So lest I lose my life for what I know, I haven't any choice. Tonight I'll go.
He knows. Yes, he knows. That much is certain. Before he tells the world, I'll see him dead. He cannot say Antiochus the Great has done what I have done and keep his head. The time has come. There isn't any doubt. This prince must die before the secret's out. Who is it there? Did your highness call me? Thaliard. Here is poison. Here is gold. I hate the prince of Tyre and want him dead. You don't need my reasons for this order. Just obey your king and say you'll do it. My lord is done. Well, good. Catch your breath and say why you have run here. My lord, Prince Pericles has fled. Go! Leave my sight. If you want to live, you'll chase the prince down, flying like an arrow for her target. Do not return until the day when you can say to me, Prince Pericles is dead. My lord, if I can get him within range, I know I'll take him down, I promise you. And so farewell until the deed is done. Valiard, good luck. Until the prince is dead, there'll be nothing but screaming in my head. <laughs> We'll leap the time and travel fast as thought. Sail seas in cockle shells as men cannot. We'll hurtle distances and blink past time and at the speed of thought move climb to climb. Let no one disturb me. What's happened to my mind? Why does this melancholy flood my head? It lies with me through peaceful nights in bed. Though I look on beauty, I can't see it. The danger I fear is in Antioch. I know he cannot swing and hit me here, but I don't feel safe. Approach the future with anxiety, and soon the fear is all that you can see. So this is what is happening to me. I am too weak against Antiochus. He'll invade my country with his armies, terrify my people and spread havoc. His hate for me would punish my people. It's them for whom I fear more than myself. Great trees are anchored in the earth and must protect their roots, for when those die, trees fall. And so my people who gave me their trust shouldn't fight a war I can avoid. May every comfort bless your blessed heart. And may your mind always be at peace, dear sir. Hush now, children, and let the adults talk. Those who blandish kings only abuse them. When Sir Smile here simpers about peace, then that is when you know that you're in danger. Prince, pardon me or damn me as you please. I cannot be much lower than my knees. All but him go. Yes, yes, my lord. Helicanus, you have moved me. You see something in me. What is it? I see rage, fearful lord. Hmm. If a prince's frowns are so deadly, why do you risk making me angry? Why do plants risk looking up at the heavens? Because it's where everything that nourishes them comes from. Get up, please. Get up. I, uh, I see you are no flatterer, <laughs> but I'm grateful for it. Mm. And God forbid kings should listen to lies that hide their faults. You are the kind of counselor I need, for by such wisdom a prince can be a student. What would you have me do? To bear with patience the sorrows you have brought upon yourself. You speak like a doctor, Helicanus, prescribing potion he won't take himself. <laughs> well, well. Here's what happened. I went to Antioch, 
mm. intending, as you know, to gain a bride. The rumors of her beauty were not wrong. Her face was like the heavens beyond wonder. But oh, the rest of her, I'll tell you now, was the lurking, shameful rot of incest. Oh. When I found out, the evil father pretended to be kind, not murderous. That's when my guard went up. But, you know this, the time to check the room for knives is when the subtle tyrant leans in for a kiss. Yeah. My fears were raised, and so I came back here. The man's a despot, with a despot's fears. And if he panics, as I bet he does, that I will go reveal unto the world just how much princely blood the man has shed to keep the filthy secret of his bed, he'll blunt that fear by gathering his forces, telling the world I harmed him in some way. Uh. Let all my people pay for my offense. If that is what you call his hateful lie, the guiltless then will suffer in a war. Who cares who's right when everybody dies? Love for my countrymen, including you, who just reproached me for it, oh, kept me no. from sleeping, drained blood from my face, Sorry. filled my mind like a hive of bees with cares. If I couldn't shield my subjects from harm, the prince that I am could only pity them. Well, my lord, since you will let me speak, speak I will, and freely. Antiochus is worthy of your fear. The man's a brute, who means either in public or by stealth to kill you, sir. He clearly wants you dead. Well? And so, my lord, go travel for a while. With time, he might forget this heat of rage. Or he might just die, if we are hmm. lucky. Hand your power over to another. Should it be me, this is my pledge to you. I'll be as faithful as the morning sun. I do not doubt that faith. Aye. But if he tries to overthrow me in my absence? Then all our blood will mingle in the earth. She'll take us back as she once gave us birth. Tyre, I will turn my back on you. And go, then. It's Tarsus that I mean to travel to. When I arrive, I hope to hear from you. My cares about my people are yours now. I hand them on to you with all my trust. I don't ask for your oath. I don't need it. A man who breaks a trust isn't a man who would be stopped by anything he swore. Mm. In our different spheres, you and I will be so careful and so deft that some will say this was the time of our great reckoning. The ideal servant and the ideal king. Aye. <laughs> Sir. <laughs> You've seen a king whose evil lust made his own child incestuous. By contrast, then, this noble lord is virtuous in deed and word. But silence now, and watch him run, for all his trials have just begun. This is the court of Tyre, a place where I've got to kill King Pericles. And if I don't, I'm sure to be hanged at home. It's dangerous work. Well, as the story goes, he was a wise man who, when he was given leave to ask for whatever he wanted from the king, said, anything but your secrets. Makes sense to me. Because if you swear allegiance to a king as I did, and then he asks you to do something despicable, you're stuck. 
You can't go back on your oath. And then you find yourself doing something like... This is Wait, here come the Lords of Tyre. You have no need, my fellow Lords of Tyre, to question me once more about the King. He left me a commission with his seal, so you can have no doubt he's traveling. What? The king's gone. When he was at Antioch... What about Antioch? Royal Antiochus, I don't know why, took against our king, or so it seems. So Pericles, fearing he'd sinned somehow, is doing penance for that in his way by taking up the life of a sailor. A job that every minute threatens death. Well, I guess I won't be hanged after all. The king will be relieved that Pericles escaped the land to die upon the seas. I'll introduce myself. Peace to the lords of Tyre. Ah. Lord Thaliard from Antioch is welcome. welcome. King Antiochus sent me with message for princely Pericles. Ah. But since I came here, I've heard the news. Your king has set off for some unknown parts, uh, which means empty-handed I'll return. Well, the message that you brought needs no delivery, since the man it's for is no longer here. Mm. But before you go, we do desire our friend from Antioch should feast in Tyre. Will that imagination have its way? For in the mind, no boundaries can have sway. And if you will allow us to do so, we'll speak one tongue in every place we go. I'll enter in the gaps to guide you through and sketch the scenes that must be dreamed by you. The play on podcast series Pericles was translated into modern English verse by Ellen McLaughlin and directed by Lisa Rothy. Episode scripts were adapted and produced by Catherine Eaton. Composer, Rindy Eckert. Sound designer, Jane Shaw. Sound engineer, Daniel Ben Shimon. Executive producer, Michael Goodfriend. Senior producer, Miriam Lauba. Managing Producer, Robert Cappadona. Coordinating Producer, Taylor Bailey. Casting by the Telsey Office, Karen Castle CSA and Ada Karamanian. The cast is as follows. Keith David as Pericles. Kathleen Chalfant as Gower. Johanna Day as Lycorida, Diana, and the Baud. John Keating as Helicanus and Philemon, Jenny Greenberry as Marina and Antiochus's daughter, Amy Kim Watsky as Dionysa and Thaisa, Jeffrey King as Antiochus, Simonides, and Pander, Barzan Akavan as Saramon and Thaliard, Tommy Schreider as Lysimachus and Leonine, Benjamin Bonenfant as Bolt, Messenger, fisherman, knight, pirate, sailor, servant, and lord. Orlando Pabotoy as Cleon, messenger, fisherman, knight, pirate, sailor, servant, and lord. Christiana Clark as messenger, fisherman, knight, pirate, sailor, servant, the ship's master, and lord. Additional support was provided by voice and text consultant, Rebecca Clark Carey, equipment and recording engineer, Tommy Freed, the senior manager of business operations and partnerships at Next Chapter Podcasts is Sally Cade Holmes. The play on podcast series, Pericles, is produced by Next Chapter Podcasts and is made possible by the generous support of the HITS Foundation. 
For more about the Play On podcast series, visit playonpodcast.com, where you'll find interviews with the artists, producers, and engineers who brought it all to life. <laughs>